Welcome back, artists, to our summer edition of At Home with APS. I'm Mrs. O'Neill, here again with, um, with you this week. And if you were here last week, hopefully you remember how I greet you. And if you weren't here and you don't remember, well, we're going to go over it again. I like to greet everybody when they are starting doing art with me. And so I say, I am so glad to see you today. And you guys respond and say, we're so glad to be here. So let's give it a try. I'm so glad to see you today. That was wonderful. It makes me feel good. It makes me glad to be here too, as well. So today, um, we are going to, I'm going to start with asking you a question. Um, about our lesson today. But before we start, like last week, I like you guys to put on your thinking caps. So here we go. I'm going to put on our thinking caps. I start at the top of your ears, kind of pinch and pull them down, and go all the way down gently to the bottom of your earlobes. Let's try it again. Together. Here we go. Putting on your thinking caps. Okay. All the way down. Oh, yeah. My brain is ready to think. Here we go. The question that I am going to ask is, as an artist, you guys are all artists here, um, how do you decide what you will create. Let me ask that again. As an artist, how do you decide what it is that you're going to create? Here's another question. And what is your art going to look like? So there's two questions. Let me repeat both of them. As an artist, how do you decide what you're going to create? And what is your art going to look like? Yeah, those are all very wonderful answers. So um, I think I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I, as an artist, decide um, what I'm going to create and what it's going to look like. So the first thing I use is I look around me. So I'm going to look around, huh? Thinking about what I see, thinking about what I hear. You guys try it at home. Go ahead. Take a look around. What do you see? What do you hear? Some of those things that we see and that we hear can inspire us and spark our creativity to think of something to create and make art out of. So um, sometimes, as artists, I know I do, I really think about like seasons when I'm thinking about my artwork. So I want to know what season is it right now? That's right, it's summer. Um, what are some of the things that we see in summer? Right, I agree. We see birds, we see flowers, we see trees that are green. And what are some of the things that we do in the summertime? Yeah, like last week, I don't know if you guys were here, but it was the day at the beach. I know we don't have a beach here in New Mexico that we can head off to that's super close, but I like to swim and so does my family. And we go to the pools and we do swimming and we go outside and sometimes People go camping or have picnics. 
So I'm just gonna flip that switch. So those are the two questions that we just went over. What are some things that we see in the summer? These were some of the things that I thought of. What are some of the things that we do in the summer? Those are a couple of other things that I thought of. Maybe you have some other ideas. What do you think? Is there something different that you do at home in the summer? Cool. Okay, so when we have, go camping or maybe have a picnic or go outside, we see some really small animals. We might hear them flying by us. We see a lot more of those things in the summertime than we do in the winter. What are those things? That's right, they're bugs. So I'm gonna read a story about bugs. So let me just switch this over. Let me get that ready. Here we go. Bugs by Nancy Winslow Parker and Joan Richards Wright, illustrated also by Nancy Winslow Parker. I really love this book because it gives me a lot of the scientific parts and words for the different types of bugs. I'm probably not gonna read all of the story but it'll be here for you to look at. And if you feel like reading some of those words on your own or having somebody that's older than you that can read them, that's great. Here we go. Oh, that's awesome. What bug bit Thelma on the thigh? A horse fly. I don't know if you've ever seen a horse fly, but they're pretty big and I've been bitten by one before and it's not too fun. It does kind of hurt, but look it. It has all kinds of parts. It has wings, it has antenna, legs. Whose shrill sound woke Ada? A cicada. How many of you at home have ever heard those cicadas outside your window at night? I know I have. And this is what they look like. What crawled into Grant's shirt and pants? Ants. <laughs> Looks like they were having a picnic and he has a bunch of ants that are crawling up into his pants. And this is what the ant looks like up close. What bug made Nick's dog sick? A tick. Oh, I can see it right there on its ear. And this is what the ticks look like up close. What jumped from Queenie's back? when she was squeezed. Fleas. <laughs> look at all those fleas jumping off of that cat. And this is what they look like. No wonder they could jump. Look at their legs. What Slurpee bug made Doug say, uh, a slug. Look at that slug. It's very similar to a snail, but without the shell. What did Sam find swimming in his apple cider? A spider. Here's a spider up close. It has lots of different parts. Look at that. Look at all the names of all the different parts on the leg. What bug fell into Ben's broth? A moth. And look at here. I am sure here in New Mexico, I don't know about anywhere else, there were so many moths just a short 
four or five weeks ago. What left a bump when it bit Rita? A mosquito. Oh, and here's a mosquito up close. I don't know about you, but I don't like the sound of mosquitoes by my ears. What ran across the rug full speed? A centipede. Centipedes have lots of legs. What ran over grandma's roach? A roach. Ooh, here. I already know what a cockroach looks like. I've seen quite a few of those here, and they're very large. They're almost as big as this one on the page. Eee. What chirped as Nick walked through the thicket? A cricket. There's what the cricket looks like. I know I hear a lot of crickets. Don't see a lot of them all the time. Why did the porch collapse one night? Ooh, because of the termites. And here are all the different types of termites. What bug did the nurse see in Ada's blouse? A louse. Look at that. Or lice, maybe. If you have head lice, that's what they are. That's what they look like. What tickled, oh, sorry. What twinkled its light? In the twilight sky, a firefly. And there's what the firefly looks like up close. How many of you have ever seen those fireflies blinking on and off? I have seen them too. What fluttered its wings as it flew by? A dragonfly. And here's what the dragonfly looks like. I think those are super neat looking. So that's the end of our bugs book. So let me go back. And there, there we go. So I already asked those questions. So let me just ask it again. Who notices that there are more things moving on the ground and flying in the air during the summertime? Good. I do too. And what are those things called again? That's right. They're bugs. And so, today, I'm super excited because guess what we're going to be making? You're right, bugs. We're going to be making bugs for our art. And some of you might be saying, ew, but guess what? It's your art. Be creative. If you think they're too ew, then make it so that's not so ew. If you love inspecting and making bugs the way you want them, uh, just looking like the real bugs, then that's great too. So, how do artists work? That's my question now. Let's think about that. How do artists work? kind of talked about that already, right? How I get my ideas from my environment and looking around and listening. Yeah. So our art today is going to be making bugs, but how are we going to do that? What are we going to use to make our art? Wait a second. I'm not really sure. We read a book about bugs, got some ideas, saw some actual images of bugs. Let's take a closer look at some more bugs. So 
here we are. I picked a certain kind of bugs. Clopteria. I'm not sure if I'm saying that exactly right, but I like to just call them a beetle. <laughs> and so the Clopteria is the order name of the beetle. And did you guys know that it is known that it, it, the beetles include 350,000 species of beetles. That makes them um, the largest group of animals on earth. It's amazing. Three, I'm gonna say that number again, 350,000 different types of beetles. That is just, blows my mind. I think that's incredible. So I chose, for me in my art, I'm going to kind of look at the beetle to get my ideas from. Okay? So as I'm looking at the slide of all these different types of beetles, hmm, I'm taking in information, I'm looking, I'm seeing, they're very similar, but very different as well. So let's take a look at another slide. So what are the things that you notice about these bugs, these different types of beetles? Yeah, what are some of the things that you notice that are the same? Yeah, I'm noticing that there are six legs too. Let's just count. One, two, three on one side. So that means there's three on the other side. So three and three, that's what? That's right, six. And I am noticing that there's something, there's like this hard shell on the outside. What is that hard shell on the outside called? Do you guys know? Yeah, it's called an exoskeleton. Everybody say that together. Exoskeleton. That's that hard shell on the outside. It supports the bug. What do we have that supports us? Yeah, that's right, our bones. Wait a second, take your arm. Feel it. Is it on the outside? No, it's on the inside there. Inside, underneath my muscles and my skin, my bones. That supports me so I can stand up and walk around. Well, the beetles have the exoskeleton and it supports them so everything on the inside doesn't get harmed. So, that's another thing I noticed. What about, are they all the same color? No, that's something different, isn't it? Right. So, there's different colors. Oh my gosh, I'm noticing that not only are they different colors, some of them have patterns and some of them don't. Like these bugs here have this stripe pattern and this one doesn't and neither does this one. And this one over here has some sort of splotchy pattern. And on the wings here, there's a stripe pattern. And that one doesn't. Awesome. Okay. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I think we're ready to make our own bug or at least show you the materials that you're gonna to use to make your own bug. Okay, here we go. So what we're gonna to use today is recycled materials to make our bug. I have a couple examples. So I have this bug that I made, and then 
I also have a smaller bug that I made. Made some wings, and I'm gonna flip to my camera so you can have a better look at what I used so I can talk about that. Okay, so here's my first bug that I made. Ooh. So I used a water bottle. I used some pipe cleaners. I used some caps. I used some craft sticks or, hey, it's summertime. And if you're having popsicles on a stick, you better save those sticks so that you can use them to make your bugs. And I created a pattern on there. And then I'm gonna talk about the inside in just a second. And then I made this smaller bug here. Maybe if I, I don't know, can you see that very well? It's a spoon and I just broke off the handle and I made some pattern on my spoon and I filled it with little pom-poms. Maybe you have some of those at home, maybe not. But I'm gonna talk about some different materials that you can use now. So, here are some things before I came. I went around my house and I collected all kinds of recycled, re, being able to reuse is always great, different items to use to make my bugs. Oh, a paper towel tube. That's a good thing to make a bug out of that. Oh, here is a clear plastic, you know, um, if you have a snack that you bought at the store and cheese and crackers and some meat, this is the tray from that. Use that. Um, here's my water bottle. Here's a big fat straw maybe. Make sure you wash those out, maybe, especially if you have like something with sugar in it. it. Might be a little sticky, so rinse it at least. Maybe wash it. Um, I have some tissue paper. Maybe you have a place at your house where you keep tissue paper um, for presents or gifts that you might be giving to people. That's what we do at our house. And so I took some of the tissue paper. And you know, being an art teacher, I have some items that you might not have, although I did have some pipe cleaners because I'm also a mom and we made different things with it. And so I happen to have these at home that my kids haven't used in a really long time. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna bring them. Maybe I'll use those. I have some ribbon that I might be able to use. Again, from wrapping gifts. Bought this huge roll of pink. Just have it at home. Um, maybe if your parents drink coffee and you have coffee filters, those might be a good thing to use for this project. Also paper towels, I'm gonna to show you something you can use with that. Uh, okay, let me move the bag down. I think the best thing, the type of tape that I have at home, and maybe some of you guys have some duct tape at home, that's what I like to use. Doesn't have to be colored, could just be the silver duct tape. Or if you don't have duct tape, just scotch tape or masking tape. Tape works the best for this project though. If you have only have glue, well, it's just gonna take you a lot longer to glue things together. Maybe I, I, I grabbed, I had a um, ball of yarn, grabbed it, thought maybe I could use that. Um, and like I made the other one, my little bug out of a clear plastic spoon, and I had a bunch of extra little handles that I just threw in the container, just in case. So, um, and also I have some permanent markers. Water-based markers, if you have just regular markers and you don't have permanent markers, that's okay. 
because I'll show you what you can do. Permanent markers work really well on writing on plastic. The water-based markers, they just kind of rub off. So if you really want to write on your plastic, use a permanent marker and make sure you're asking somebody that's older than you at home to make sure it's okay before you get all your materials. Maybe go through with them and pretend it's like a scavenger hunt of reusing recycled materials that you can use to make your book. Okay. Oh, I forgot to open up this. I thought this was some fruit. Strawberries were in here. That could make a really cool bug. I think I might use that today. And then I put a whole bunch of different items. Maybe, oh, this, my kids had um, some otter pops, you know, popsicles in the plastic. And this is like the meshy stuff that came, that, that came in. Um, some used... Um, little plastic strips. You can all types of things that I have here. I'm going to slide over this white paper so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. And then I won't make a mess. There we go. Let's see. What are some things that I'm going to use? I think I... I'm going to dump those things out. Yeah, I think I might use my strawberry container to make a bug. It's going to be a big bug. I think so. And I was telling you that using a permanent marker works best on for writing to make marks if you want to add patterns or lines or shapes to the outside, the exoskeleton part of your bug, that would be great. Um, if you want to add, but you're not going to use it to color the whole thing. I like using the clear plastic rather than something like the paper tube, but you can still use the paper tube and you can write on that. But guess what? That's what I added in here. What do you think is in there? Yeah, you're right. It's the tissue paper. So I can add easily color to something clear inside by just adding the tissue paper on the inside to color my bug. So what if I don't have any tissue paper? and you really want to add color, and you don't have a permanent marker. Well, let me show you this first before we get started with making and show, giving you some tips. I'm going to take my paper towel, and I'm going to take my coffee filter and my colored markers. And guess what? I can just use my water-based markers, and I can color my coffee filter There we go I'm just gonna make it one color just to make it easier Maybe I want part of my bug to be green If I really wanted to I could make it a pattern of color on here. Okay. What if I don't have a coffee filter? Oh, that looks blue. How funny. <laughs> and then it's purple. You can see that. Um, I'm going to use red now. I just am using a paper towel. And look at that. My paper towel has some pattern on it and it's showing up. I kind of like that. You know what? Oh my gosh, I just thought of something really neat. I'm going to color my whole paper towel red. And notice how I'm using the side of my marker and really making long strokes across, going off the edges. Not pressing too hard. Just 
going across, back and forth, filling it in. Ooh, I really like the way that pattern is showing up. I think that's neat. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Good. Going a little slower. Just really stretching from edge to edge, edge to edge. I like kind of pushing just one direction instead of going back and forth, because if I started going back and forth, it might scrunch up my paper towel and then it wouldn't work quite as smoothly. And you know what? I had an awesome idea as I was thinking and coloring my red paper towel. I was like, wait a second. Red reminds me of what bug? Hmm, what bug does it remind you of? Reminds me of a ladybug. Yeah. So I'm going to take my black marker now. And guess what? I'm gonna just make some dots on there. I might not be making a ladybug, but it kind of can remind me of a ladybug having some black dots on my red. If you don't want to do that, do you have to? No, it's your art. Okay, I'm going to stop there with my dots. I might need to add more later. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure how I'm going to use it. So I like to test it out. And then if I need to add more later, I can go back in and add more to my red paper towel. Okay, I'm going to kind of just set those to the side and I'm gonna get my plastic strawberry container. I kind of want to take this sticker off. But if I can't, then easily. Oh, wow, it is kind of coming off easily a little bit. If you have some troubles at home getting stuff off or opening things, just ask. The older person at home who might be there to give you a hand. Say, hey, I really want it to look like this and describe what you're trying to do to them. And they'll give you a hand. Okay. So, okay. Oh, yeah, I did. I think I need to fill it first. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm gonna start adding color on the inside. And as you can see, it has these little slits. And then I can add what to those little slits? Right, that's where I can make the legs for my bug. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to use my red paper towel. Ooh, I kind of like that. All right, but I kind of need some more filling in there. So I'm gonna grab some other paper towels instead of my tissue paper. Make it kind of loose, kind of fill that in there and then wrap my red paper towel around it and close it up and see if that's the way I like it. Hmm. I think that's pretty good. Although it's kind of white on the bottom, I could add something on the bottom to add color on the bottom as well. Maybe I'll take a tissue paper. Maybe I'll add pink on the bottom. 
I'm going to fold that over, put it in there, put my paper towel on top, giving it some volume. Oh, yeah. And now I'm going to close my lid. Ooh, I like that. That looks pretty cool. Now, I need to add some more parts to my bug. Like I said, legs and some antenna and maybe probably some wings. But before I do that, are we drawing today? No, we're not. So today, we're using an element of art that we call form. You guys say form. Great. Form means that something is three-dimensional. It has a front, it has a back, it has sides. I can pick it up and it has a volume to it. That means it, it has sides and it's three-dimensional. Yeah, I love making three-dimensional art using form to make my artwork. So here we go. Now I'm going to think about legs. I do have the pipe cleaners, but I kind of like these little zip ties. I thought maybe I could use those today. So I'm going to take a couple of those. And, hmm, how many legs do they have again? I forgot. Oh, that's right, six. How many on each side? Right, three. So, I noticed that I have one, two, three ends. So I don't really need to cut my zip tie if I can get that to fit and stick out for those three parts. So I'm gonna open up my container and try to make those stick out of the little slots. You know what? I'm gonna have to take that out now. That's how it happens sometimes in art. You have to like redo something, re-figure it out. It's kind of like being a scientist. Oh my gosh, I kind of like those. I don't really like the smaller leg coming out I like the longer legs because it is pretty big. So guess what? I am going to use, I'm going to cut that off. Just going to use these two. On this side, it keeps popping out. There we go. And then two on the other side. was kind of hard to cut. <laughs> Make sure you're asking a, a, somebody at home that's older than you if you're having a hard time cutting something that's really thick. These legs are almost going to be like tentacles. I don't know if this is going to work. Let me see if I can get another one. A lot of times when you're making art, it's, as I said, like being a scientist, experimenting, testing something out, see if that works. Hey, if you don't like it, figure something else out. There we go. I'm not sure if I like these legs. I thought I was going to like them, but they're kind of doing their own thing. So I think I'm going to try to use something different. Okay, I am going to use my pipe cleaners instead.
Oh, look at that. That's way easier. There we go. Oh, I like it. Those are neat. Now I'm going to stick my paper to fill the color back in. Oh, there's some legs. They're just out straight right now. I can play around with those later, but I think I need some maybe eyes. And so now I'm going to use my tape, my strong tape. I like duct tape because it rips pretty easily. I don't need to cut it with scissors. And then I'm going to cut that in half and use two. And I'm going to put some eyes like right in the front here. I like to tape this part first and then I'm going to tape it on. Tape the little cup. These were little portion cups that I got from something. Just decided, hey, I could use those. Oh, wait a second. I just thought of what I could use these for now. I didn't like them for the legs, the zip ties, but I could use those for the antenna. So I'm gonna cut those apart. Whoa. Gonna have to use my tape again. And I'm going to tape it to the side next to the eye. There we go. Tape this one on the other side next to the other eye. Kind of sticking up and out. That's right. Ooh, my bug is taking shape, creating some form. Now I could actually use my, remember I said permanent marker has to be used to draw or color on plastic. And I could use my black. There we go, give it some eyes. I could even color in on top of my sticker here so it makes it disappear because I decided I don't really like that and I couldn't get it off very well. Just turn it into something else. If you have something on there that you don't like, that's what I like to do. Okay. Oh my gosh. And I could add some more to this bug, which is super cool. I like it so far. Oh yeah, wait, I forgot. I need to add some wings. So what do I have that I could make into wings? Wait, I have this red kind of uh, netting and then I have these craft sticks. I think I'm gonna make bigger wings because it's a bigger bug than my other bug that I made earlier. Okay, I'm not going to add a pattern on, but I could decorate my craft stick into some kind of pattern. So I'm going to take the netting, cut a little piece off of that. Maybe I'm going to make, you know, sometimes bugs have wings that have kind of uh, stuff in between the outside parts. So that's what that little netting is. So I think that's kind of cool. I might only have be able to make one because I only have one other craft stick. So sometimes when you have limited resources, you got to think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So maybe I'll just make one wing on the back. I think that's a good idea. Make it extra wide. And I have to kind of measure. 
Then I have to cut the netting. Here we go. Cut that netting off. And then I can have, so I'm gonna flip this over. Do some more on my tape. Rip that in half. Hey, I'm gonna use some of that red tape to go on top of my craft stick. Can add a little color to it. Because it is kind of a red, red bug. So the red tape adds. And here's some more tape. So now I can tape my wings to my bug. And you know what? I'm going to use my wings and cover up that part that I didn't like. And it's going to be back here. Ooh, I like it. It kind of hangs off a little bit. Just one wing because I didn't have enough. That's OK. It's my art. I get to make it the way I want. Cool. What do you guys think? Here is my recycled bug. I like it. It's a little different than the first one I made. Some similarities. As I said before, you can use a paper tube and you can use markers to decorate the outside. Maybe add a striped pattern to it or dots, color it first with the water-based markers or permanent markers, whatever you have at home. Add some legs, some antenna, some wings. You um, can even use like small boxes to make a smaller bug. Remember, find anything that you have at home and think about what could these parts be? I had some big metal like staples and I thought, whoa, those might make something really cool as a part for a bug. So when you're looking around your house for materials to use, anything that kind of sparks your interest or gets you to thinking like, ooh, I really like the way that looks, that might be turned into something that you really like to make your bug. So my suggestion is to really hunt first and gather a whole bunch of different objects and different materials that you could possibly turn into a bug and use your imagination just like I did and figure things out. Oh, things weren't working out for me. So I stopped and I thought, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. I can do something different. My bug doesn't have to have two wings. It can just have one because I didn't have enough sticks to make two wings. Or I could have changed it and decided, oh, you know what? I think I'll just have one on each side. So then I can have two wings. There are so many different options and ideas and ways to be creative when you're using your recycled materials in order to make your bug at home. Um, and then also, if you don't have, I forgot this part. I thought this would be kind of cool. If you don't have tissue paper, you don't want to color your paper towel or, or a um, coffee filter, then you can take yarn and stick. It. I, this is why I like the clear containers. You can stick a whole bunch of yarn inside the clear container, if you have a yarn, yarn at home. And that could be coloring your bug. Because you know, sometimes bugs, you can kind of see on some bugs, the insides and what's going on inside the bug under the exoskeleton. So that might be kind of cool in order to add color to your bug as well. Yes, all different kinds of ideas. Let me just 
keep adding some more yarn to this water bottle. I'm curious to see what it's going to look like when it's all in there. Look at that. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. I like it. What do you guys think of my yarn bug? <laughs> the all different colors. Since there's so many different colors, I think I'm looking over at my pipe cleaners. What color should I use? To make the legs stand out. I think white would look the best. So I'm going to add, show you how I added the pipe cleaners to the, my bug a couple different ways, just so you have some ideas. You can take it and wrap it around the water bottle and twist the pipe cleaner. Ooh, that's some antenna. I could do that around my water bottle too. Maybe I don't have any tape. I can have really short legs from a, a, a bug and really long antenna. Ooh, I like that. This is good because you know what? If you don't have something at home that I used to make my bug, it just challenges you to be more creative and think about what can I use? How can I make it happen? That's one of the things I love about art. Makes me think outside of what people might do. I think of something different. And there's another way you can make a bug, just the legs with the pipe cleaner or something that you have at home. And I didn't use any tape. I didn't use any markers. I used yarn, a water bottle, and there we go. There's another bug. And then, how can I add some eyes? Ew. I really like the caps to the water bottles. I might want to poke some holes in there, but again, if you're going to do something like that, poking holes, make sure you're talking to somebody at home that's older than you and asking for help. And I could poke holes with a scissors. And then I can stick it on the antenna. And there are some eyes. There you go. Look at that. I made a bug without using any tape or any markers. And that looks just as cool for me. What do you guys think? Do you like that bug? Its eyes are up there. It could be wobbling around. Look at all the different types of bugs that you can make. From just some simple materials, recycled items that you have at home home. Right. And what do we call that element of art when we're making something with three dimension that is three dimensional? That's right. It's called form. You guys say it one last time. Form. Good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for our at home with APS.